Hello, everybody. It's not a right here. Brought to you by Soul again. This is a contest entry into AGK's Vinyl Life 100 subs contest. He's up to 183 right now. I I think he's been making videos for three months or so. I became aware of him a couple of months ago when he did a, a band album covers video. I watched that. I've watched maybe a half a dozen since then. I haven't watched all his videos. Um, but it he has a very interesting and challenging contest. Not everybody will be able to enter this contest, but I'm going to challenge Mazzy to uh, do an entry to this. I'd like to see the cheap and cheerful record collector do a entry to this. I'd like to see Dead Wax 66 do an entry to this. In fact, yeah, uh, Dead Wax 66, what's up with that? He's changed his name to Freaks in the Garage, but there's no content. It's like, oh no. Don't tell me he's pulling a Robert Z on us, you know? I think Robert Z's on his 10th channel now, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I hope uh, Randy's not flaking out on us. He seems like a pretty level-headed guy. but uh... Anyways, I was going to do a video last week. Before I get into the contest, I was going to do a video last week. The 41 odd questions that nobody gives a shit about. And that's kind of why I didn't do it. I saw a couple of the English chaps do it. And I thought, yeah, it's pretty interesting. I wrote all the all the questions down, and I even added a couple to spice it up a little. And I I just threw it away. I didn't make a video last week. I like to make one a week, but then I saw Cheap and Cheerful Record Collector. He did ten questions, a thread that Ron Haggerty started, and these are pretty interesting questions. The, the, like the. It's like one through ten. Like one is show a band or an album by a band that was one and done, you know. And two, three, four, all the way to ten. Ten was the X factor. Show an album, a song or whatever has the letter X in it. It was pretty good. But this one here, man, this takes the cake. You, he want A K or A G K. That's the other thing, dude. Your fucking uh, channel name, man. It sounds like a serial killer or something, you know? AGK. He wants you to show five albums from five separate decades. Okay, that's easy enough for a lot of us. But if you show 1965, he wants you to show 75, 85, 95, and 2005. Those exact years. So that made it kind of challenging. Well, for me personally, because I don't have a lot of 50s albums. So I'm going to start in the 60s, most likely. I don't have a lot of 90s albums. There are certain bands I do have. So I, I was kind of covered there. I don't have a lot of the 2000s. I have more of the 2000 teens. But it's in the later teens. So it was kind of, it's a challenging thing. Mazzy, I, I know, can do this because he has a lot of records. In fact, he has, they did a survey, and Mazzy has every third record ever made. Can you believe that? Unbelievable. And the cheap and cheerful record collector, I think he could do it because in his last video, I haven't watched it yet, but I saw the tag, he's showing a Benny Goodman. And that's 1940s, so he can go back to the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. 80s might be a challenge for him, but we'll see. I think it's a great idea, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to leave a link to AGK's contest, and I would love to see some people enter this contest. You have to have a pretty vast, I don't know, 
if you have to have, you do have to have kind of a lot of records to do this. But anyways, I'm starting with 1961. And it's an electrifying evening with the Dizzy Gillespie Quintet. Recorded live in concert. Now this apparently was a pretty popular album in the day. I bought this probably 72-ish when I was getting into jazz at a Goodwill. I remember I bought it on the Goodwill on 19th Street in Bakersfield. And uh, about a year and a half ago or so, I went through all my jazz records and I got rid of ooh, more than 50. I mean, I don't listen to jazz as much as I used to, but I the ones, I mean, I kept my miles, I kept my weather report, I kept, you know, my one John Coltrane. But the ones I wasn't sure of, you know, I, I'm going to listen to it. And this one, cut it. You know, it cut the mustard, dude. It's a very well played. They're cooking, just put it that way. And I highly recommend this, dude. It's uh, I'm not really familiar with any of these other guys, except for Dizzy Gillespie. It's uh, on Verve Records, and that's by 1961. Now, the 1971, I'm a little more familiar with. It's Sly and the Family Stone. In fact, I saw Sly and the Family Stone in concert when this was their most recent album out. And... I must say it was, it was, it's probably in my top 10 best concerts of all time. It was, it was amazing. I have their uh, Live at Woodstock set and they get into a groove on that and it's, it's, it, it, it's really good. But this period, they, they were on another level. I mean, it was just, it, it's music that other people just weren't I don't know if they weren't capable of doing but other bands were not doing this kind of shit and it this is a fantastic album it's a really good shot right there I was sitting probably at, this is the side of the basketball court I would be sitting about right there I was I, I was really close to the stage I could see the cocaine and Sly's nose, you know, but I was off to the side. But yeah, fantastic. The only bummer about that concert was it was probably almost an hour when the you know the the second act finished and Sly and the Family Stone came on. It it was a long wait, and I'm thinking, oh man, they're not gonna show up because he was very notorious for not showing up for gigs, and uh, yeah. There's a riot going on. I didn't mention it. It's Nine of Family Stone. Fantastic. Now we're on to 1981. And I saw this band in uh, their promotion or their tour of this album for those about to rock. And I saw, saw them on this tour at the LA Forum where the Lakers used to play. And again, a basketball arena. I saw... These guys at the Bakersfield Civic Auditorium. And uh, I had great seats for this. Again, I was like on the side. But I was on the, the other side. Looking at the stage, I was on the right. And I've said this before. I used to get tickets from my Uncle Aubrey. And we never got floor tickets. But we would always get like, you know, the, the, the side seats. Not far back. And the thing about this is, you know, they're they're going and, and fuck yeah, they were rocking, dude. And then at some point, the cannons go off. Well, the cannons are right there, and man, I was like in shell shock. That shit was, it was ridiculously loud. And here they are. Great show, AC/DC, great in concert. Never saw him with Bon Scott. Now we're up to 1991. And I got Mud Honey. Every good boy deserves fudge. Which, 
is a stupid name for an album. And this is a pretty crappy album cover, if you ask me. But it's a really good album. It starts off with Generation Genocide, which is... It starts off with an organ. And it doesn't sound like a Mud Honey album. And then the drum, the drums give it away on the first song. But then once the second song starts, let it slide, that fuzz... Just fuzz punk rock, I guess you could call it. Great album. Mud Honey. One of the bands I do own several of their 90s output. Now, 2001... 2000s was kind of hard for me. I got White Stripes. White Blood Cells. This was... I had heard of this band before. A guy that worked at Middle Earth Records told me about this band. He goes, yeah, man, you got to go see them. You know, they used to play clubs. And I never did. But Dead Leaves and the Dirty Ground, they actually played that song on K-Rock. And I go, fuck yeah, man. Punk rock's back, you know. And I, because it's a punk rock song. So I bought the album and, man, first listen, I go, man, this ain't a punk rock album, you know. But it's a fantastic album. It probably maybe my favorite White Stripes album. There is a version of this called uh, Red Blood Cells. Where, uh, was it Jeff McDonald? The bass player for uh, Red Cross. He adds bass to every track on this. And he, I guess he got the blessing of these guys to do it. And it pretty much sounds the same as this. The bass isn't real prominent, except for in a couple of songs. And I guess maybe once a week or something like that, he released one song on online, and you could download them. But I would love to see uh, Third Man Records uh, release that. You know, Red Blood Cells, that'd be cool. And we're back up to 2011. And we got Nah. In Nod We Trust. Now see, this is a fantastic album cover. Look at that. This album is... It starts off with the bass. However, you know, and it's just very repetitious. This... Nod tends to be a pretty repetitious band. Kind of like the... Can almost, like a kraut rock band, like that type of... But this one is more of a electronic there is uh starts off with the bass and then these electronic keyboards or whatever you call it i don't know i think they're doing some of it on their laptops you know then you, the, there's this feedback guitars come in and there are drums side two it's just one song on each side side two it's more of an industrial sounding in fact, it's the beat, the drum beat, but it's an in, that industrial <laughs> drum beat. That's the most prominent part of that. But yeah, it's a good album. It's not one of my favorites. The thing with Nod, you can buy one of their albums and, you, oh, wow, man, I don't know about this. And it doesn't sound like their other ones, you know. They, they have, they vary quite a bit, put it that way. But that's my, I actually did six, I think. One... Two, three, four, five. I did six. He only wants five. You got one more week to enter his contest, so, you know. Give a AGK. A subscription. And Randy, if you're watching this, man, uh, I don't have your number, man. I'd I like to text you and reach out to you, you know. Give you a hug or whatever. I hope everything's good. Hope you're not flaking. Take care, bro.